Greetings, Sagittarius and Sagittarius Rising. This is your Western forecast for August 2024. I'm going to be talking about a lot of positive energies here um, and some positive with relationships, with traveling, with education. But this is not the month to be committing to important projects and moving forwards taking it to the next level. This is a very important month for doing a lot of restructuring, re-evaluating, um, and jobs to relationships could be tested. Now, the reason for the major readjustments to make sure that where, where you've been going is now clear and solid so you can achieve your goals as we get past August. Um, that's where the, it could be very positive with all the restructuring. Two big reasons, of course, Mercury, decision-making Mercury will be retrograde August the 4th till August the 28th. Mercury in retrograde is often when we're rethinking, second-guessing, there's misinformation, but more intense than that is expansive Jupiter will be squaring Saturn. This happens every three years. It's often about a lot of restlessness financially. Many people will change jobs, lose their jobs. Relationships could be really tested. Um, now, before I break all that down and how it applies to Sagittarius, if you enjoy these kinds of videos and would like to see more of them, click like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so you can receive the latest postings. And if you go into the description box underneath the video, you'll find direct links to book an astrology reading or check out my two question offer. So if you've been watching my videos, I always like to start with where is the sun shining? What is, where is it lighting up? What's important to you? The sun goes into Leo, a fellow fire sign. Sag is a fire sign, a lot of compatibility. At the end of July, every year, through the first three weeks of August. The sun in Leo is nine signs past Sagittarius. So the sun is highlighting um, your ninth house. Ninth house is actually the, natu is the natural house of Sagittarius. So there's a lot of comfortable energies here because Sagittarius is the ninth sign of the zodiac. You start with Aries, Taurus, Sagittarius is the ninth sign. And here is, um, so now the sun is shining in your ninth house, so all things Sagittarius, education, traveling, publishing, even religion of the ninth house. Now, as you are thinking about all those areas of interest of Sag and the ninth house, we get to the new moon on August the 4th. The new moon is now when you're setting your intentions. You know, you've been thinking about all these directions and opportunities, and now it's like, this is where we want to go on August the 4th. Now, that new moon will hold that ninth house energies to the beginning of August, the beginning of September, because the new moon goes for four weeks. But what's interesting about this a new moon in your ninth, lighting up all those ninth house possibilities, Mercury, decision-making, curious, restless Mercury, goes retrograde on the day of the new moon. So there's going to be a lot of readjusting, rethinking, revising when it comes to these ninth house of travel, education, publishing. But this new moon is also being positively supported by Jupiter. The new moon's at 12 degrees of Leo. Jupiter is 15 degrees of Gemini. Jupiter is the natural ruler of Sagittarius. 
and the ninth house. So we're getting this double, triple support of ninth house Jupiter to the new moon. So that's bringing a lot of growth, a lot of optimism, great for um, traveling, for education, um, that Jupiter seeking more, seeking more knowledge, um, publishing, etc. Now, the sun will leave Leo and go into Virgo and start moving, shining into your 10th house, which has more to do with career and business. But it doesn't take away the ninth house of traveling, education, publishing, because that, not, that new moon in the ninth house, which is very favorably supported by lucky Jupiter, holds on into the first week of September. But what's happening with the sun now moving into Virgo, the last week of August, is now you're starting to think about your about um, long range career. That's the tenth house, and with the ninth house, maybe one example could be that you've been doing a lot of summer traveling if you're in the northern latitudes, and now you're starting to think by the end of August, I got to get serious about getting back into a work mode or I don't have a job I got to start you know really thinking about got to get out there and get a job the ninth house of that new moon is teaching it's publishing it's school it's education and by the end of September or the end of August in the northern latitudes so many of you will be really thinking about going back to school, whether it's teaching, whether it's being a student, getting more professional training. Um, and that could all be with enhancing your career because the sun shine going into Virgo, into the 10th of career matters. And Venus, the planet of love and harmony and creativity goes into Virgo, into your 10th house of careers, August the 4th to August the 29th. The entire time Mercury is retrograding, doing a lot of re-evaluating and rethinking, second guessing, Venus is at the same time in Virgo in your 10th house of careers. Venus is, here's a positive example, is if you need to look for a job, the Venus will make you likable, um, popular, well-received. If you have a job, you could be doing a, and you need to do a sales presentation or do a, an important meeting, um, then the Venus brings in all that benefic um, sociable energy. So anything you're trying to sell and promote, people are buying it with that Venus in the career sector. Now, the Jupiter-Saturn square. So Mars, when it is in Gemini with Jupiter in Gemini, in your seventh house of marriage, contracts, partnerships. So I talked about this last month's video. Mars is a two-year cycle. Mars is ambitious, it initiates action, it's courageous, it's bold. And it went into Gemini on July the 20th till September the 4th. Joining Jupiter that already went into Gemini at the end of May 2024, through May of 2025. So Mars is in Gemini once every two years. Jupiter's in Gemini once every 12 years. So all of August, Mars, ambitious Mars with lucky expansive Jupiter are in Gemini. This will occur again in two years, then four years, then six years, and eight years. The whole time, Jupiter continues in Gemini every two years, Mars will get back into Gemini. But Gemini is opposite Sagittarius. 
The opposite represents the important other in your life, what you attract, what you're attracted to. It's partnerships, it's marriage, it's contracts, it's negotiations. Mars is that, uh, that courage and that drive, and Jupiter brings all this promise and opportunity. Well, but there's a caveat. Saturn, um, Taskmaster Saturn, is in Pisces that is keeping the Mars-Jupiter exuberance in check. Jupiter squares Saturn, or makes a hard angle with Saturn, every three years approximately. You'll see a lot of financial worries and restlessness. Sometimes there's job changes, relocation changes, and it can also really test the structure of a relationship, especially as the Mars-Jupiter is in your seventh house of marriage. But that's along with your business partnerships or important clients, customer base. And the Mars-Jupiter, but the Jupiter is going to remain till next May. Mars is just there through August, uh, September the 4th. So the Mars to the Jupiter, at least this month, is giving a big push, get new clients um, to really work on your partnerships, professional, personal. But Saturn is a 30-year cycle. Saturn teaches us to slow down, take responsibilities. Saturn went into Pisces, into your fourth house of home, family, and real estate in 2023. And it's there through the very end of 2025. Um, so there could be with Saturn in the fourth, because it's in Pisces. Pisces is a four signs past Sagittarius. Lots of responsibilities, worries, challenges. That's Saturn with family, with uh, property, with real estate. So here's the Saturn in the fourth of family in your living situation. And it's blocking all this expansiveness of Jupiter and Mars in your seventh house of partnerships. When we talk about marriage with the seventh house, there could be a real crisis of readjust, uh, necessary readjustments and restructuring um, of the marriage. This can also play out because of that sun going into your 10th house of careers at the end of August. But Venus, benefic Venus, popular Venus, is in the 10th house of careers all of August. So this could also be going after more uh, customers and clients. Um, but if you're having a business partnership, um, which is also a marriage, but in business, if you have some type of contract, some type of agreement, that's the Jupiter moving through the seventh house of partnerships. Um, it is being um, tested by Saturn. But Saturn, restricted Saturn, is in the fourth house of family. So there's a lot of business. There's a lot of traveling, getting more education. I talked about all that lucky ninth house and Jupiter. But there's still this real testing of um, that goes in with the restructuring with a business partnership or a major client or a marriage. Now, the new moon is on August the 4th. The new moon is when we, whether we realize it or not, are setting our intentions. This is what well, this is where we're focused. This is what we want. This is what we're going after. Two weeks later is the full moon. When you get to see what's from the intentions of the new moon, what's working and what's not working. The full moon brings everything, reveals everything. It all comes to light. Now this new moon is on August the 19th. And it's in your third house. The third house is the sector of communications and classes and information. This full moon is going to be in a hard angle of square with unpredictable rebellious Uranus. 
That could mean that you get some real, with Uranus could be shocking or unexpected, very surprising news. That's the third house. Um, or all these sudden decisions about selling, uh, that's the third house, about um, job interviews and meetings, that's the third house. But that August the 19th of the full moon, which could bring these unexpected surprises, is also the peak of the Jupiter square Saturn. So it could be that there's a crisis in some type of partnership for many of you. The third house is the house of communications. And the, the, sh the shock and surprise is you're getting news that you didn't know all this was going on. Um, or you kept it from your partner. And now there's all this, um, this need to do all this, this talking and trying to find a, you know, find a resolution. That's all part of this major restructuring. Think of it as, for most of you, You've been going along, and prior to August, he was just, you know, it keeps getting more solid, more focused, more closer to achieving your goals. But then, as a metaphor would be, it's, you know, you're sailing along, and you see, and you hit an iceberg. Well, it's a minor iceberg, you're not going to sink and drown, but you got to do a lot of readjusting with that path, with that boat, before you can move to the next level. And it might be some unexpected, the earth, the earthquake, the iceberg could be um, news about business or about a personal relationships. Venus is the planet of love and desire. When it's in the 10th house, you could be attracted to an authority figure, an older figure, or your boss. Um, but it's often um, when you're more, um, anything you're promoting and selling in business, I've already mentioned that, will be well received. But when it comes to romance, the 10th house, it's more, it's also not just career, it's very visible. Um, it's why we look to fame in that 10th house. And so you could be more demonstrative and more visible with your affections. And there's the Jupiter Mars in the seventh house of relationships. And the positive with the Saturn is you realize you're, um, that everything is not perfect and you've got this unsettled news and now you have to um, do a lot of re, you know, a lot of talking, getting back on track, whether it's personal, whether it's professional. I want to thank you for watching. If you like information on how to book an astrology reading or checking out my two-question offer, visit my website at cardino.go, that's .co. Until next month, be safe and well.